Thank you. Um, and it also is my first time presenting to such a good audience, so um, bear with me. I'm a little nervous. Um, so we'll get into it with, um, I'll just tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I'm a freelancer. Um, I'm also a mentor. I like to think of myself as an amateur artist. I really like watercolour and topography and sketching. I'm not very good, but I like doing it. Um, and yes, I'm a nature, dad, uh, nature lover and a sausage dog mum. And she makes a meal appearance here later on too. Um, and yeah, and I'm a graphic designer, turned web designer, and I'll tell you a little bit about my journey. So I went to uni to study graphic design, and my plan was to come out of that and design logos and brand different material, things like that. Um, I knew, had no intention of getting into web at all. And, and one of my um, courses at uni was basic web design, and I learned some basic HTML, CSS. I really fell in love with it. It really combined being creative um, and designing as well as being a bit techy and feeling like a computer hacker because I need some HTML, um, <laughs> which was really cool. So I really um, I got into that, and at the time I worked for an architect and convinced him to let me build um, him my very first paid website. Uh, and this is it here. I built it, um, designed it in Photoshop, and then built it in Dreamweaver in HTML. And you'll notice that I put the logo at the bottom of the page, <laughs> which I'm not sure why I thought that was a good idea. I was designing it on one of these massive screens, so it obviously didn't fit on a, on a big screen, but um, on a laptop these days, it would be hidden down the bottom. Um, and it also, of course, wasn't responsive, none of that. Um, but I was pretty proud of it. Um, and then, so it was uh, a few years later that I discovered WordPress and thought, oh, well, this is, this is pretty awesome. I can, I can build websites um, in this, and it's great for my clients because then I can sell it with a content management system and they can edit things themselves, and then I could therefore sell it for a high price tag. So um, I got into uh, WordPress, but I didn't develop them in WordPress myself. I was just designing Photoshop and then teamed up with a developer and given to him and he created a custom theme for me. Um, so I did that for a few years until I discovered page builders. Um, and there's a, there's a lot out there now. The one I discovered at the time was Divi, and it just opened up my world. It really empowered me as a designer to be able to not only design the websites, but also build them myself. So um, it allowed me to cut, and it also allowed me to cut out um, having to design in Photoshop. And I could just design straight in the browser, which was um, a huge time saver. So, this is where my process is up to now, and this is um, what I'm going to go through today is based on um, that process. Uh, but even if you don't design websites this way, I'm sure a lot of the steps and a lot of the things I'll talk about will still be available to you, hopefully. Anyway, so let's get into it. So the first, oh, and I will just mention too that I'm currently, um, I'm planning on teaching this process to people. So I sort of have the nine stages, I have these little metaphors that probably sound a bit lame, I'm not quite happy with a lot of them. Um, so, but if you see them, that's what I'm talking about. So, the first stage is uh, the target, and this is where we get super clear on your ideal client and your website goals. I really liked this quote, I thought it sort of sums up what I'm about to talk about, which is the only important thing about design is how it relates to people. Um, so, at the start, here, what I like to do is, firstly, um, I, I identify the goals of the ideal client. So, we can think about the whole target market, but as well as just getting specific on the ideal client, and I like to actually create just a really basic, not a detail, but a basic ideal client avatar for that particular website. Um, and sort of put in there what their, their likes and their dislikes are, how old are they, whether they live, <coughs> You know, what's their career, that kind of thing. And then I can sort of uh, refer to that anytime I'm trying to make a design choice on the website. Um, refer, you know, what are they actually, what are their goals when they come to the website? What are they there for and what do they want? Um, next is the brand's goals or the business goals. What do they want out of the website? Um, so this could be obviously to market them, it could be to sell a particular product on there, or it also could be to streamline their business a bit more. Maybe they want a form on there that's going to capture some information that's going to save a lot of admin time or something like that. So I don't mind what those goals are. And then lastly, the editor's goals. So who's going to edit the website? What things are they going to want to edit? 
often, but you're going to need to make easy for them to access. So obviously don't hard code that, make it easier for them to be able to edit it um, on an ongoing basis. Um, yeah, so and, you know, if you have the time, create an ideal client avatar. Um, it doesn't have to be very detailed. They can be very detailed if you've seen some of the templates out there. I personally don't go into that much effort. But just having that there is a really good thing for me as a designer when I'm figuring out what the you know the design and the layout of the page is going to be. Where am I going to put things? What are the things people are going to want to put on? Um, so next is the goods. So this is where I gather together all the content needed to create the site. Um, so I start out firstly with the site map, just so essentially that's just an outline of what are the pages going to be, um, and the hierarchy. So think of it really as your main menu, essentially in most websites, it's probably just the main menu where things drop down. Um, but there might be some other hidden pages on that site, there might be certain landing pages or thank you pages you might need to do as well. Um, so just sort of laying that out in a site map. And then um, thinking of the keywords. For the website, so it's always, um, you know, I don't get into really full on SEO copywriting myself, but it's always good to just know. So you can think of like good, strong page titles and things like that throughout the job. And the keywords are always really good for, to give to a copywriter. If you're going to get professional copywriting done, do a bit of keyword research first and figure out what the keywords are. Um, and then copywriting, so whether you're going to do that yourself or outsource to someone. So one thing I actually added into my process a few years ago now was um, including copywriting in my packages. Because um, if anyone's worked on a website job, you probably know that the thing you're waiting on the longest from clients is the copywriting. It can be something that delays the job so much. So including that in my packages um, has really sped up the process for me. Um, and I don't do it myself, I've just partnered with a couple of local copywriters um, who give me a good break and I just include it in and it's all just packaged together for the client. Um, and there's just a couple of um, cool tips here with gathering the content and things. Um, Legal123, if you haven't heard of it, is a, an Australian website where you can get the terms and conditions and privacy policies and things. Um, it is a paid service. I think for like a website package that has sort of the three main things you need, the disclaimer, privacy policy, and terms and conditions, it's about $170. But say if you refer to a client there, you can sign up as an affiliate and then you actually get like 40 bucks back every time someone buys something, so that's really cool. Um, and then some ways of gathering content that I found really useful too is Content Snare, which is um, an online tool, I think, by, um, and he's an Aussie guy, he might even be from Brisbane, he's created this tool um, that you can pretty much just send a client there, they can um, enter in all the information that you need for the website, um, and they'll get automatic reminders at certain periods of time, saying, like, hey, your content's due in a week, you need to submit your content, and they're sort of doing all the chasing up for you, so that's a really cool tool if you, if you're like me, you just hate having to email clients every week and say, I'm still waiting on this, I'm still waiting on that. Um, and then another way of doing that is a Trello board, which is one that I set up that I just add a client to a Trello board. This is an example of my Trello board. And they can go in there, they can upload you know, their logo files, the style, right, if they have one, what they want their website name, tagline, all, that things, all those things to be. Um, and you can also put a deadline on there, you can set this up however you want it. And I'll have a link to this at the end too, so if you want to carry a copy of my travel board, you're more than welcome to. Um, cool, so the next one is the style. So this is where I find the style of the website. And this is where my dog gets a cameo. I had to put him in there, very stylish. Um, so, uh, firstly, is it, what are the colours of the website? So that uh, might automatically come from the logo or the branding style guide if they already have one, or you might be coming up with those yourself. Um, if you're having to come up with the colours yourself, there are just some really cool tools that I found for a bit of inspiration, coolers.co, I think it is, and Live Gradient. So coolers.co is um, a good one of just developing colour palettes, putting some colours, like it has some colour palette suggestions, and then you can grab all the um, the colour codes, you know, copy them to your site. So that's really good. Um, and UI gradients is a similar thing, but it's mainly just for gradients, really nice um, gradient combinations. Um, and then the fonts, 
one really, um, so picking the fonts for your website and one um, cool tool I found is called fontpair.co, which um, pairs together Google font combinations. So um, there's all Google fonts on there and it just puts them together and you know shows you some interesting combinations um, and it also links to seeing them in the wild. So you know it links to websites that actually use those combinations so you can see them in action. Um, and then gathering together images as well. So there's obviously a lot of stock image websites out there like iStock and Adobe Stock. Um, but I thought I'd put some free ones up here. Um, Unsplash is a really cool free stock image website that I, I would use every day or so. It's, it's a really good one. Uh, Raw Pixel is really good too. It has free images and paid ones. Um, and Otilly is just it's a little bit different. It is a paid team membership one, but she does give away two free photos a month, and they're really kind of girly, feminine, flat lay images, which I love. So um, I subscribe to her, and she's a Queenslander as well, so I thought I'd put her up there. Um, but yeah, so gather together all the images. Um, next, I'm up to the canvas. So this is where we set up your site on solid foundations. Um, so at this point, this is where I go grab the um, domain and hosting. I usually do that in uh, one fast group. So um, I personally, on most of my websites, I use SiteGround and I just um, buy it all at the one time. Um, otherwise, you know, if you already have a domain, then put it up to the new hosting, but this is where I do that step. Um, and then I will also install WordPress. And yeah, just one little tip here, and I'm sure you've probably heard it a lot today already, um, is not to skimp on hosting. Um, there's so many website um, hosting providers out there, um, and if you're serious about your business, you definitely want a good website host. Um, not every business needs or can afford WP Engine and some of those really good ones, um, so that's why I find SiteGround's quite good for my smaller clients. Um, it's quite cost effective. So. Uh, nextly, up to the brush, which is to set up the basics of your WordPress website. And so this is where I typically install my theme, my child theme, uh, most of my plugins and the general settings of the website. What I, um, one of the biggest time savers I've found is um, an app called, or a tool called Manage WP, which allows me to clone a staging site when I'm setting up a new website. So there's lots of tools out there that can do this, and actually in the last presentation I just saw one of the plugins that he was talking about with some migration clone tool, and it sounds like it probably does exactly what this does, and it's free. Um, but essentially what it does is, this is a screenshot, I have this, like a staging site set up, um, so that's already got my, my theme installed, my child theme installed. Uh, it's got a whole bunch of plugins that I regularly use um, and just some basic settings. So all those things, when you first set up a website, you'll notice you're doing over and over again each time. And it's probably, it's probably easy work, but it probably takes you half an hour or an hour to do. Um, to say that, I just have this already set up as a um, staging site and then I just clone it over to the new hosting or wherever the, like, the new destination site's going to be. Um, and within 15, 30 seconds, it's there. It's all done, ready for me to go, and I just have to go in and change it. So that's a huge time saver. Um, and Manage WP is it's free to set up. And then for that cloning ability, I think I paid about $2 Australian a month. Um, so it's, it's really cheap. Um, but maybe if you want to pay that, check out that plugin that um, the last guy was talking about, because I think, would, yeah, that looks pretty cool too. Um, <coughs> oh yeah, and the tip here is like, this is where I typically um, do a set up a coming soon page. Um, basically, because, and I'll show you, this is the kind of same page I have, where if you have a website that um, you're building, and it might take a month, three months, six months, depending on how long the client takes to give you content, um, it'll, it'll be up there and Google can be indexing it during that time. So rather than um, not getting sort of any indexing or anything, if you put up a coming soon page like this, you can put in the relevant keywords and the relevant, you know, page title, meta description and things, and it will actually um, start indexing the site and doing it that way. So this sort of just shows you here, I have this just basic template. You can make this look as fancy as you want, but this is just the basic one. Um, and so you can make sure that 
Um, it's only next time once the website actually goes live, it's actually starting to appear on Google already. So. Um, and then we're finally at design time. So the first thing I do is create a wireframe. And this is generally just for my reference. This is my fancy wireframe that I draw for myself. This is for a job only did last month ago. Um, so I don't show this to the client. Obviously, it's not very impressive. Um, but for me, it just gives me, like, with, when I get all the, um, the content and I know what's going to need to go on the home page, for example, I can then put this in, like, a bit of a layout in my head before I start building. Just makes it a lot easier than trying to do it on the go. So I have a little sort of method to my madness here. You'll see like all the little circles at the top are obviously social media links, the, the dashes are the um, main menu items. Then if I have a heading, I'll just do a straight line. If it's body text, I'll do like a squiggle so that just, I just know from my reference that's what's going on. Um, and that really awesome box with a weird mountain thing in it, that's my idea of an image, so that's where an image would go. Um, but just doing that for a page just makes it a lot easier for me to then once I go into the builder to design, I know what I'm actually going to do. So, um, so I've done my wireframe. I then will just create all the pages. I won't actually add anything to them. I'll just create, create them and set them up as pages. And that way I can then add them to the main menu. I'll go into my theme options and my theme customizer. And I'll um, just set up some basics with that. So we'd like maybe set up the colour palettes and the colours that I've chosen, the ones that I'm going to be needing all the time. Um, I'll set up the fonts that I've chosen. I'll add the logo, just all those basic kind of things like the layout of the, the header, stuff like that. Um, and once I've got all that set up, that's when I go to a, my visual builder, which is, um, I used to be, but obviously there's a lot of different page builders out there, Visual Builder, Elementor, they're all fairly similar in what they do, um, but I then, yeah, I'll go to the visual builder and I'll just start designing in there. And this is just a quick sort of, i show you. This is um, how Divi works and um, I have used Viva Builder before, it, it's quite similar as well. And so you're designing and seeing it all come to life, similar to Gutenberg, but, you know, on steroids really. Um, and so, yeah, I'll just go in there, do all that, create my home page. Um, then the next step is once I'm happy with the home page, I then create the library items before moving on to um, the rest of the site. So what I do is create a library of items to reuse throughout, throughout the site, which saves a lot of time. So um, firstly, yeah, so if possible, you just save um, sections or modules or whole pages. So for instance, um, if you're going to use a call to action section on multiple pages of your website, um, save that. Um, and you can save that as a, either as like a global item, which will be exactly the same across all the, um, all the pages. And the benefit of a global item is that you edit it once in one location and it'll change it across all of those locations. You don't have to go onto 10 different pages and you know, change a full stop or something like that. Um, for um, other items, maybe you just you have a bunch of services pages, you've got three different services and the layout's going to be exactly the same for each of those pages. If you just save a layout, obviously it's not going to be a global one, um, and then replicate that on the other pages and then just swap out the content and the images and text and things. Um, one tip here is, and I learned this the hard way, test it on mobiles and tablets before you save those items. Because if you're then going to be duplicating them many times and then you test it later and go, oh, that was terrible on mobile, you don't want to have to be changing it over and over again. So I like to test these before I actually go and start duplicating them. And then we're into the fit out, which is uh, fill in um, all the other pages of your website. So now you've got all your library items all set up, then you can just start going and creating all those pages. Um, and yeah, and then I just test and get approval, obviously, before we're ready to go live. Um, a tip here is to avoid shiny objects in Drone. It can be really tempting when you've got these page builder things and there's so many different options, there's animations and there's gradients and there's parallax and there's all this cool stuff going on and you just want to do everything. Um, really going back to the idea of who's that ideal client, what's the goal of the website, and what's the best way of getting them to um, 
you sort of funnel through and get to the end goal and you don't want to have all these different things going on and distracting them. But maybe you do want a bit of a flashy thing happening with your call to action that's going to get their attention. So just keeping that in mind. Um, and I thought this was a good quote too. Less is not necessarily more. Um, just enough is more. So um, make it, yeah, make it look awesome and all that, but just keep in mind what the goals are for the website and what's going to be um, the best method of getting um, people to do what you want them to do. And lastly, um, I really don't like this metaphor, but it's all I can come up with, is the housekeeper. So um, clean it up, make it fast, and get your website ready to open its doors. So um, at the end of every job, just before I go live, I just like to tidy everything up. It's probably the OCD person in me. I just want to like make sure that everything is nice and clean and tight. So um, firstly, cleaning it up is uh, getting rid of all those extra images that you um, probably uploaded and you're not actually using on the site anymore. Um, removing any plugins you don't actually need anymore. Deleting any pages you, you don't need that you maybe you've just tested, made up draft pages or draft posts or something like that that you're not actually going to use. So just cleaning it all up, um, which is really important too if you're building websites for clients to you know, make it nice and clean before you give it to them. Otherwise, they might just get confused about what all these extra pages and things like that are. Um, I also like to add uh, alt text to all the images as well. Um, and obviously I do this after I've deleted all the images I don't need, otherwise you're just going to be wasting time adding alt text to images you're going to end up deleting anyway. Um, uh, to smush images, so compress them. So before I've uploaded them, I've already resized them roughly, roughly to what they should be um, and optimised them a bit, but then adding like a plugin like WP Smush is what I use. Um, just to compress the images even further to make your website load a lot faster. Um, adding a security plugin as well if you need it. Some hosting providers um, you don't necessarily need it. I know I, I use WordPress on all my SiteGround websites, but on, if, um, on my WP Engine ones, they won't let me use WordPress because their security being conflicts with it and they've got enough security anyway. Um, but ensuring that there is some form of security on your website is important. Um, adding a caching plugin as well, um, so something that oh, caching, catching, no one calls it something different. Um, so adding a caching plugin to just speed up your website a lot. For that one, I use WP Rocket, which isn't a, which is a paid one, um, but there are some free ones out there. Um, and then also adding Google Analytics and Search Console, so setting that up and connecting that to your website. Even if you, or if you're doing it for a client, if you don't feel like you need it, it's a good thing to have just for down the track. If for some reason you in down like a year or two's time, you want to start doing something more with your website, you want to start marketing it, it's good to have those statistics and everything in place already. Um, and just a tip here is to have a pre-flight checklist. So I have a checklist of about 30 or 40 points on it that I just go through at the end of every job and tick them off and make sure that they're done. Um, and it's, it's really easy job at the end too when you, you don't have to use much brain power if you just read through a list and get them off. So um, having some kind of checklist and I just have that set up on my trolley board and go through that each time. So. Um, and then launch it. Then you're you're ready to go. So. That's it. Um, and then I just wanted to, there's a link here to if all those things I was talking about, um, if you want to go to that URL there, I've got links to all that. And I also have my ideal client avatar worksheet thing you can download there too, and I'll link to my fellow board. <coughs> yeah. Any questions? Great, thank you a lot.